Welcome back to Houdini Isn't Scary Project, Part 3, Rigid Body Dynamics. Now, in the previous part, we created our lights, our camera, and we gave everything materials. So everything looks quite nice now. But that's not what we set out to do. We set out to make a simulation where a ball bounces and then turns into a flip simulation. So to get there, we have to do a rigid body simulation. And that's what we're doing in this tutorial. We're doing the part where the ball bounces. Now, there is more information in the link below. That's on our Patreon for free. You don't have to subscribe or anything. Go check it out. It's just more information and diagrams and things. So now, what is a rigid body simulation? Well, rigid body dynamics refers to a type of simulation where you're working with hard objects. So that could be anything. It could be a ball, a cube. But in terms of real life, it would be things like concrete or a rubber ball, or things that don't really lose their shape or deform. So that would also be things like glass or metal or brick or stone. And this is what's generally used for destruction simulations. So if you're swinging a wrecking ball through a building, you're going to be using rigid body dynamics because all of those objects are rigid. So in our case, it's very simple. All we want is for a ball to bounce. Now, let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. Back in Houdini, we have a couple of things that we need to do. So from the file where we left off last, which is of course available for download down below, we are going to start on our dynamics. So the first thing we need to do is actually position our ball in a place where it would start in the dynamic sequence. So let's go into our ball setup node. And on this transform node, we can move it up. So let's activate our transform handles and with the transform node selected, move it up just slightly above the pipe. So we can do 1.25. Let's just make sure it's out of the camera view. Yeah, so it's out of frame over there. And let's make sure that it's not penetrating the pipe so we can scale it down slightly to 0.95. Perfect. It can now fall through the pipe and bounce on our platform. But how do we do that? What we need is a null, firstly, so that this becomes easy to reference inside of our dynamics network. We can call this ball setup out, and then we can jump up a level, and we can actually hide this ball setup node. We can then drop a dop network, so just type dop in your object level, and drop a dop net. We can rename this dop net to ball underscore rigid underscore dynamics. So that's our dynamics network for our rigid body simulation. Double click on it to dive inside. Inside of here, we need a few things. And we've done something similar with our pop solver where we made sprinkles in the donut tutorial. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop down a rigid body solver. So press tab, rigid body solver. And that can go straight into our output. And if you remember correctly, when we were talking about what every dynamics network needs, we discussed that it always needs an object. So we're going to put an RBD object, and it's this one, the little rubber ducky. And the rubber duck just represents that it is a single object. If you check the others, so type RBD, you'll see that you have packed object and fractured object. Now, those two are for multiple pieces that are all held together. This is what's known as a hero object. So it's a single object. So our RBD object goes into the first input of our rigid body solver. By default, it brings in this default geo. So we can very easily change the SOP path on our RBD object to that ball. So we go to our ball setup and select ball setup out. And now it's in here. You can see it up at the top there. And we can actually hide other objects. Right? So there it is. And if you play this back, it won't do anything. We just get that blue bar representing that it's been cached. And you can also switch on the real time toggle in the bottom left so that it plays back at real time. So if we click on that and then play, it'll play back at real time. Jump back to the beginning and let's add a gravity node so this actually does something. So tab, gravity force, plug it in right over there. Now you play it back, your ball falls. Right, super simple. But now we want it to bounce on the platform. So to the left, we're going to drop what is known as a static object. So type static object, 
and bring one of these in. Now I want to merge it into our main stream. So we drop down a merge node. And we can plug it in over there or after our gravity, it doesn't really matter. Then we take our static object and plug it into our merge. Now, on your merge node, something to take note of is the effector relationship that a merge node has. You'll see that it says over here, left inputs affect right inputs. So if you have a collider, you want the collider to affect your ball. You don't want the ball to affect the collider. That means that we actually need to switch these around because as you can see now, our rigid body solver is the left input. So we can go over here and just click on the static object and it'll switch your inputs. You can also click and drag and that works as well. So there we have it. Now static object is on the left and we can rename this platform collider. And we can also name our RBD object to ball object. So ball underscore object, our platform collider, we need to go over to it and select the SOP path. So go over to SOP path and let's just go find it. So that will obviously be our platform and we'll go to platform out. So now it's been brought in. And if you want to see the collisions, you can hide your geometry, go over to the collisions tab and view the collision guide. And because it's a very simple geometry, it's pretty good, but we can increase our uniform divisions if we want to about 80, just so that it's completely accurate. Hide your collision guide, display geometry. Right, so now it's in the scene. And what happens if we play this back? They interact. As you can see, our ball bounces and then does a little bit of a wobble. And the reason it's doing that wobble is because on our ball object, we also have some settings for the collider. So if we click on our ball object and go over to the collisions tab, you can see over here that we have a collision guide and we can hide our geometry. As you can see, we can make it more accurate by increasing the uniform divisions to maybe 100. Jump back to the beginning. And if you press G, you can center again. And you can see that the ball is now smoother. Great. So none of that was too complicated, I hope. We just have this ball that falls. But our ball currently isn't really bouncing. If we play this back, the ball falls and kind of loses all of its bounds. Now, much like in real life, there is a physical element to all of your objects. So if we go over to the physical tab on our ball object, you'll find a couple of options here. You'll see that we have center of mass, density, rotational stiffness, and here we have bounce. And by default, it is at 0.5. And what this means is that every time it hits a collider, it only returns 0.5 of the velocity that it had. So if it hits this, 0.5 of the velocity that it had coming down is returned back up. But on our platform collider, under our physical tab, we have bounce on here as well. So this defines how much energy is returned back into the ball. That means that these two work together. So on our ball object, we can set the bounce on the ball to be one. And if we play this back, you'll see that it becomes bouncier, right? And we can also increase the bounciness on the platform. So maybe the platform is a bit bouncy. We can set the bounce to 0 0.6. Now, if we play this back, it bounces quite nicely. However, it feels like it's moving very quickly. Right? It's realistic, of course, but I feel like it would be better if it were a bit slowed down so you can really get a feel for the effect. So we're going to go over to our rigid body solver and under time scale, we're going to change this to 0 0.75. What that means is that time is basically slowed to about 0 0.75 times actual speed. We play this back and it's a much more subtle bounce, right? So it's pretty nice now. It's one, two, three, right? So at about 45, the last impact. And that is where we want to turn it into a flip. So we want to turn it into a fluid. So that means that we're done in here. And it looks pretty good. One, two, three, great. So all we have to do now 
is actually just save out the simulation that we've created. But before we do, I also just want to have you get a bit more comfortable with dynamics, because in the next part, when we work with flip, flip is a bit more complicated. And when I say a bit, it's reasonably complicated. It takes some time to figure out all the settings. And that's only right, because when you're working with flip, there's so many different types of fluids in the world. For example, if you're pouring coffee and say you're mixing coffee with milk, right? They mix up and their colors mix and they have different densities so that the coffee goes to the bottom and maybe the milk rises to the top. And all of those things can be replicated in Houdini. So your simulation settings have to be quite in-depth. They have to be quite advanced and we'll only really touch on them. But just know that you can replicate pretty much any sort of real life interaction that may occur with a fluid or with a rigid body. So I want to show you a few things on here just so that you can get comfortable with understanding how this network works. So as you know, we have our collider on the left, right? And it has its own settings. Now it doesn't have much settings, so you won't really play around with this very much. Usually you'll just adjust the physical settings such as the bounce and the friction, right? So this is a very simple node. You just have your static object and it can be deforming. So say this platform was moving back and forth, you can just activate use deforming and it'll use that. So this is a very simple node. Now, your ball object, you'll notice similar things on a lot of the nodes. They'll have an initial state, so you often won't really touch this. It also has a physical tab, and we only really changed bounce here, but you can change other settings in here. Now, in most Dynamics networks, the power actually lies in the solver. So if you go over to the solver, that's where you'll change most of your settings a lot of the time. So let's go over to the solver and see what we have. Now the solver engine Bullet is actually the fastest rigid body simulator in Houdini. Bullet is extremely fast. So you can use that for pretty simple simulations, such as this one. You also have time scale, and we adjusted that. And the other thing that you'll often adjust is your substeps. So substeps are the number of calculations between two frames. Between a frame, how many times are we going to calculate all of the forces in the scene? How many times are we going to calculate our gravity, our velocity, all of those things? So substeps are generally useful for anything that's moving quite fast, because if something's moving fast, it covers a lot of distance between two frames. And so you want to make sure that the distance in between is also calculated. So that's what substeps are useful for. Now, everything else on here, you probably won't touch. But I just want you to know that for the most part, your solver does most of the work, and it's really the brains behind the operation. Your object usually has the initial settings that you want to feed into your solver. And then things like colliders are also very basic. We can now go up a level and drop down a geonode. This geonode we will rename to ball flip setup. And we're calling it that because we're going to feed what we just created into our ball flip setup and then create a flip source from that to turn into a flip simulation. In other words, to turn it into a fluid simulation. Just know that flip is Houdini's fluid simulation. So we can hide our rigid body dynamics. We can bring up this ball setup. And in here, we're going to drop a dop IO. Now a dop IO just fetches information from a dop network. We can go over to this dop network and we're going to choose our ball rigid dynamics. And the node that we want to choose is our ball object. And we also want to import a field. So we can go to fields to import, click on the plus, and it'll bring our ball in. Now, to make sure that it knows exactly what object to bring in, you just say ball underscore object. And that's just to create redundancy. It's not necessary, but it's better to put that in. So now we have our ball over here. And if you want to save this to disk, what you can do is go to this geometry file over here, click on the open floating file chooser, and we can find a place to save this to. We can go to Houdini caches, Houdini isn't scary, RBD, and I've already saved this before. It'll just be ball RBD, that's rigid body dynamics, cache dot dollar F, the current frame, so we're saving all the frames, dot 
bgeo.sc. Now, bgeo.sc is a super, super useful file format for Houdini. It's a BGEO file type, and then it's compressed with the .sc suffix. So don't get too confused about it, but basically you can save almost anything in Houdini as a .bgeo.sc file, and it'll recognize it when you try and bring it in. So we're going to save it as a bgeo.sc file, accept, and then over here, you go over to the save to file tab, and you can choose how many frames you want to save. We're not gonna save the whole range, so you can click on this to change this $f end just to something like 72. Right, so now it's just 1 to 72. You say save to disk, and it'll save it to disk, and then you can say load from disk. So now it's saved to disk, and we don't need to re-simulate every time. So the only things that we're going to do now is just some setup for when we do flip. So we're going to drop down a trail node so that we can generate some velocity. And we've done this before. We want to generate velocity on our sphere. We won't be using preserve original, but rather compute velocity. And to view your velocity trails, you can go over to the side over here, display point trails. If you play this back, you'll see. It's dependent on the direction that your ball is moving. So now we have velocity. Now we can drop down a null and plug your trail node into this null. You can call this null rbd underscore ball underscore out. Right, that's our rigid body dynamics ball out. We're also going to create another one over here that we're going to call flip source. And we're going to plug our trail node into this flip source. And that's all we're going to do for now. So we can go up a level. And the last part of this tutorial, I just want to do some cleanup. So we're going to hide this ball flip setup because this is a setup node. Click, drag, move it over. So what we currently have are our lights and our cameras, the things that we're going to render, so that's the background, the pipe, and the platform, and then eventually the ball. So for now, we're going to move our camera over to be with our lights, and just move them all next to each other, click and drag over all of them, and we're going to go up here to create network box. We're going to create a network box, and we can double click on the top of this box, to rename it to environment nodes. So now we know that these nodes are our environment nodes, so they set up our environment. We can also click and drag over these three up here, put them in a network box, and call them setup nodes. And then we can click and drag over these over here, put them in a network box, and rename it to render nodes. So these are the ones that actually get rendered. And now, while in this view, you can also press C, that will bring up colors. And we're going to just give these three different colors. So our render nodes, we'll make them blue, because those are the display flare colors, so why not? Setup nodes, we can make red. And environment nodes, we'll just make yellow. So now we have a nice little setup going, and in the next part, we can get into flip simulation. So that's all for this tutorial. I do hope you enjoyed it. We will be back soon with the flip part of this. And that's where it gets really interesting because we're going to be doing the first reasonably complex simulation. And hopefully by the end of that, you'll have quite a solid understanding of Houdini and you won't be scared to try things on your own. So once again, thank you for watching and I do hope to see your comments down below. You guys have been so positive. It's actually insane so i thank you for that but please also feel free to leave some criticisms we're always open to improvement if you like this video please leave a like if you want to see our next part consider subscribing and finally if you want to support us or you want to get some premium content go over to our patreon we have a whole bunch of really in-depth tutorials over there as well so thank you for watching i'll see you next time bye